We live in times when forests have become a subject of special concern, not only for foresters. More and more often, people who are not directly connected with forests want to know as much as possible about them. They feel responsible for what happens to forests. The aim of the Forest Data Bank is to facilitate their access to reliable information on the state of Polish forests and their condition. Its basic task is to collect information on all forests in Poland, regardless of who owns or manages them. The bank publishes a wide range of information on forests, from general statistics concerning the whole country to detailed data at the local level. The information is used, among others, by scientists, local authorities, entrepreneurs and the average Joe who want to go for a walk in the forest or to pick mushrooms. The Forest Data Bank website publishes detailed aggregate reports which can be accessed via a dedicated report builder. The dissemination of detailed data on forests to the public varies considerably from country to country. This depends on the forest management model in a given country, how detailed the forest management plans are and what the ownership structure of forests is. In this respect, the situation in Poland looks good and has further improved with the establishment of the Forest Data Bank. In the process of creating the Forest Data Bank, the Bureau for Forest Management and Geodesy collected previously scattered and inconsistent data on other forests, mainly private, national parks, etc. It was digitized and made available to the public. Now we have a standardized resource of detailed data on about 95% of the Polish forests high-resolution forest stand maps, detailed information on tree species, standing volume and management activities. First of all, the bank's resources are used by people interested in forestry and nature conservation. On the one hand, we have reliable information on forest management, and on the other hand, on the forms of nature conservation existing there. The information contained in the bank's resources is therefore a response to the social demand for access to knowledge about forests. One of the most attractive features of the bank is the mobile application, used for example by tourists, where it is possible to check the areas of the Spend the Night in the Forest program, which has recently enjoyed great popularity. Thanks to these maps, everyone has access to detailed descriptions of forest areas, the so-called forest divisions. In such a description, we can check whether the forest is managed by the state forests or whether it is privately owned, what kind of trees and bushes can be found there, how old are they, what their height is. We can check the location of protected areas, the location of tourist facilities, i.e. forest car parks, hiking trails and educational paths. We will also find the location of areas where access to the forest is temporarily prohibited or information on hunting districts for the whole country. The Forest Data Bank is also attractive for the timber industry, as it can be used to obtain, for example, a breakdown of the volume of stands by age classes or forest site types and the possibilities of using timber resources. The state forests have provided the general public with easy access to reliable information on forest resources in Poland. I'm working at the Faculty of Economic Sciences at the University of Warsaw and my work in recent years focuses on estimating non-market uh, value of non-market goods and, and services. Uh, in last five years my work focused on uh, estimating the relationship between forest characteristics and the recreational value. For this reason the data from the forest inventory um, uh, database are crucial for my work and without this data the work wouldn't be possible. The Forest Data Bank is a unique resource available for the whole of Poland. Information on forests, especially on their species composition, is also very useful in applications related to tourism planning. As it is well known, 
different tree species have different health properties. So it is important whether these are coniferous forests, whose essential oils are beneficial to health, or deciduous forests, such as alder or riparian forests, where such paths should not be let. Species composition is also important when using different forms of tourism. For example, cyclists will prefer dry forests with a visible perspective, for example, coniferous forest. A wet forest, on the other hand, is not the best place for hiking trails. This is also important from the point of view of various health problems. For instance, birch forests are out of the question for allergy sufferers, while coniferous forests will improve their health. The Forest Data Bank meets our expectations by providing the information we need for our analysis and planning work. We prepare the so-called landscape audit. The data we have obtained directly allowed us to analyze this material, i.e. to delimit forest landscapes and to continue our work within the framework of delimiting priority landscapes. The information contained in the forest database was very helpful. We could precisely determine, for instance, the percentage of occurrence of a given habitat in a given landscape unit. The percentage of occurrence of forests in the area of a given landscape is a given landscape unit. Having analyzed information published by other countries, I am inclined to say the Polish Forest Data Bank is one of the most comprehensive national data sets on forests.